Welcome back to Clean Academy. On today's episodes, we're going to be learning about acids and skincare. I'm Ramya from the product development team at Biosans, and I'm joined by... I'm Mercedes. I'm the chemist and formulator for Youth to the People. So glad you're here. As Mercedes and I were chatting, we learned that our backgrounds are very similar. Yeah. Both of us are cosmetic chemists by trade. Yes. So we've done a lot of work in product formulations. Can you talk to us about your background? Yeah, definitely. I have a bachelor's of science in chemistry, and that's where pretty much all of this started. And then I ended up working in a product formulations lab where I was doing writing lots of different recipes and formulas for um, other brands. And then I ended up having the privilege of working for Youth of the People and came on uh, to the brand as their chemist, formulating the products that we know and love. I think today we're going to learn a lot from each other. Yes, definitely. We're going to learn about what acids are, how they work, and we even have a fun demo to show what they do. So acids in skincare are weak acids that help with what we call the desquamation process or helping with cell turnover. Essentially, they're really great anti-aging actives because they help to not only slough off the top layer of the skin, but also help with wrinkle depth reductions. I wake up and some days my skin looks kind of dull and I want a yes. little bit of a glow. And, and then when you want that glow more than a moisturizer, um, sometimes you just need something with an extra kick and that's usually when we turn to acid. Yes. Not only are they really great exfoliators, also known as chemical exfoliators, but some acids can actually help with uh, keeping skin hydrated. Obviously, we know that lactic acid is a really fantastic alpha hydroxy acid that also helps with our natural moisturizing factors. It's part of the cascade that we already have. So by utilizing them in skincare, they actually keep skin really hydrated as well. So not only are you exfoliating, but you're also helping to keep those new vulnerable skin cells hydrated. So when we talk about acids in skincare, we're generally referring to one of two types, AHAs or BHAs. So what's the difference between a BHA and an AHA? That's a really great question. So alpha hydroxy acids or AHAs, things common like glycolic acid, actually help to break down the glue that kind of binds dead skin cells together. So that's how they're really great exfoliators. And then BHAs or beta hydroxy acids, things like salicylic acid, actually help to break down larger oils in our skin. So that's how they're really great at getting rid of blackheads, blemishes, acne, things like that. Can you talk to us a little bit about the natural skin cycle and where an acid would fit into that? Yeah, definitely. So as we age, our cell turnover rate slows down a little. It probably takes more like 28 days versus 21 days for our total skin cycle to turn over. So with that, when you add uh, the chemical exfoliants and when you're exfoliating your skin, it actually helps to sort of speed that up. So you have the ability to see more results with your skincare routine when you have acids involved. Now that we've talked about acids and what they are, let's go do a demo to see how they work. Mercedes, shall we? Yes, let's. So what we're looking at here is a block of ice. This block of ice is going to represent the surface of our skin. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna scratch it. And this is representative of the way that the dead skin cells can actually accumulate on the top of our skin over time. They're kind not of just moving. stuck there and they're not moving. And the surface itself is very um, scratched and little rough. It's kind of lost some of its luster too. Definitely. So <laughs> to fix it, this is going to represent what an acid like glycolic acid or lactic acid, AHAs, can do uh, for a rough skin surface. And there we have it. Completely smoothed out. Oh, it's nice and smooth. Just as this water is smoothing out the surface of this block of ice, that is how AHAs interact with the surface of our skin. They'll dissolve the dead skin cells on top, leaving a nice smooth surface. When you see resurfacing, what it's actually doing is resurfacing the top layer of the skin, leaving it nice and soft and smooth. I hear a lot of common misconceptions and myths with acids, so why don't we talk through some of those myths and try to debunk them? Yeah, definitely. I think one of the most common myths is if it hurts, it's working. And honestly, that's not the case when it comes to your acids. You definitely want to make sure that um, not only that you can tolerate them in some way, that they're not stinging or anything like that, but that you know they're also um, just as effective, not showing redness or irritation. But I think a lot of expectation is that people um, want to, to feel something when it comes to the acids. 
Another one that I've heard is the higher the percentage, the better. If this brand is using 10%, why can't we use 50% or true. why not 120%? Yeah, just kidding. <laughs> and <laughs> definitely one of the points to that is it's not just about the concentration. So it's not only going to be the fact that it is a 10% AHA or a 30% glycolic. Um, it's also how the acids are neutralized and how the pH actually plays into how effective it is. When we talk about neutralizers, we're referring to ingredients that help to increase the pH of the product so it's safe enough for you to use at home. So obviously we know that our skin acid mantle sits at a pH at about 4.5 and anything below that is when you're going to see uh, a peel or you're going to see skin start to flake or maybe even be a little bit irritated and then if the pH is a little too high say it sits right above our acid mantle pH then you're also going to notice that um, it might not be as effective or take a lot longer to work, which also can be a good thing. A friend of mine once decided to buy neat glycolic acid, Oof. you know, pure, yes. uh, <laughs> to give herself a peel, and it was not intended for home use, and we spent weeks treating her burns after, so sometimes oh my gosh. you can get a really effective product, even if it's like 10%, or um, as long as it's properly neutralized to really sit with that acid yeah. mantle you were talking about. Yeah, I definitely have a very similar story to that as well. When I first started in formulations, I was trying to formulate a very common 3% glycolic cleanser, uh, not too high of a percentage, but I completely forgot to neutralize the glycolic acid. And so of course I am my own guinea pig and I took it home to use and I ended up having a lot of really negative reactions to it to the point where I was almost like breaking out and had burns all over my face. And it actually took a really long time for me to come back from that. So I learned my lesson very early on and I don't do that anymore. <laughs> Good to know. Can you expand for us a little bit what to watch out for on an ingredient label? Another thing that's common with um, different treatments uh, with AHAs and BHAs is the neutralizers. And so really good, clean neutralizers are key to the treatment. Neutralizers such as sodium hydroxide and even arginine are really great neutralizers that you can see on the label. And they'll probably be really high up there too, depending on the percentage of your AHAs. But then also to avoid looking for things like aminomethylpropanol or um, TEA is another one that's really common on labels. So when it comes to sourcing ingredients, especially AHAs and BHAs, I am always looking for vegan options. When it comes to lactic acid, glycolic acid, these are actually options that we do have vegan options for. They come from fermented sugars. Uh, lactic acid for a long time was fermented milk and that's where it came from, but now we actually have the opportunity to use uh, different plant sugars to ferment it into lactic acid, which is really cool. So let's talk about skin types and the types of acid treatments to choose based on one skin type. What about dry skin? Yeah, so I would highly recommend for dry skin exploring lactic acid. Lactic acid is really fantastic because not only is it part of our natural moisturizing factors, but it also is a very hydrating AHA. When it um, interacts with the minerals on our skin, it actually turns into a really fantastic humectant, which draws water towards us. And for those new vulnerable cells that we are you know, exposing for that glow, we actually need all of the hydration that we can get when it comes to that. So um, lactic acid is really fantastic for dry skin and also can be really great for sensitive skin. So what about oily skin? Oily skin actually could probably benefit from um, a little bit more intense treatments. Salicylic acid is really fantastic for that because it'll help with breaking down natural oils. I also prefer BHAs as a spot treatment, so if you do have things like blemishes, acne, to just spot treat those with a salicylic acid treatment. Glycolic acid is always fantastic for, for oily skin because it also is going to help to break down the oils and the um, kind of glue that binds all those dead skin cells together, which can actually stick to our skin pretty often, especially if we have oily skin. And what's yeah. nice about glycolic is that it also helps with fine lines and wrinkles and overall Definitely. complexion dullness. Definitely. Um, so it's one of my favorites from time to time it's, when I need the extra glow. Yeah. So let's talk about how to actually use these acids. So I personally am combo dry skin. Mm -hmm. And so I typically use a toner with AHAs in it. 
Um, and when I'm looking for toners with AHAs, I'm also looking for hydrating ingredients as well. I apply them very simply on my face. Typically I'll spot treat, but yeah, I'm, I'm definitely looking for something that is hydrating, I can feel it be hydrating, and also know that it's gonna give me that glow that we're looking for. Well, I have a couple of ways I do it. So for glycolic acid products, there's something that I use that is a rinse off mask. So I'll cleanse, uh, put the glycolic mask on for maybe like five minutes, rinse it off, because it is pretty intense. I yeah. don't feel like I need to leave it on. And from time to time, I'll also use a nightly lactic acid serum mm. and just leave it overnight. Yeah, definitely. When we talk about application, how do we know how much we should be using and can you overdo them? You can, you can overdo it, honestly. There are so many options out there when it comes to acids. The key is to make sure that you're choosing one that works for you. And when you're applying that one singular one, is it going to be in a wash off product or is it something that you leave on? And that's definitely dependent on skin type and skin goals as we talked about before. You definitely want to ease into the process of using acids for sure. So for someone who's never used an acid, what would you recommend? Yeah, I think a great place to start would probably be with a wash off product. So something, like a mask or yeah, something like that. Yeah, a mask, designs. a cleanser, something with a low percentage because as we talked about, you know, using uh, low percentages, making sure the pH is a correct pH for your skin as well. But I would definitely start with a uh, lower percentage and easing it into your routine. So we've revealed this fresh new layer of skin. What do we do to protect that fresh new layer? Yeah, you definitely wanna make sure that anytime you are using these acids, that you are going in with a type of sun protection. An SPF, anything higher than 30, is definitely something you wanna do. But even if you're using your acids at night, definitely take into consideration using sunscreen the next day. Uh, you know, they are going to leave your skin very vulnerable and you wanna make sure that you're protecting those new glowy cells that you have underneath. So definitely use sun protection. Why don't we talk about when to use some of these acid products. Yeah, for sure. How to incorporate them into your routine. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's key in choosing the right one for you. So again, skin goals. My personal preference is to cleanse my face mm -hmm. with just a very um, pH balanced cleanser and then go in with a toner that has AHAs and spot treat. So that's one way that I do it in my routine. But if you are trying to ease into the process, you know, finding where it fits the best wherever it makes it easier for you. Today's been a lot of fun, and you don't have to be a chemist like we are in order to learn about acids and really know how to incorporate them into your routine. Thank you so much, Mercedes, for being here. Thank you. For more videos, check out Biosense's YouTube channel. For more resources like this, be sure to check out cleanacademy.com.